This is my informational genre for my MGP. It is a uh, Minecraft uh, display of the different weaponry strategies of D-Day. Okay, so the first strategy of D-Day was the use of the Bangalore Torpedo. So right here are the Allies with their landing crafts landing on the beaches of Normandy. So you can see they're all running out, some of them are dying, and then they're gathering in these pits. These pits are like formed from mines or artillery shells that hit the ground. This guy over here has his machine gun, and these guys right here and right there, they have Bangalore torpedoes, and they're trying to put them over the barbed wire because if they try to run through the barbed wire, they'll either get tangled up and eventually die, or they'll have to get up and actually like throw grenades into it, and they would get shot down that way because there's heavy machine gun fire coming out of these bunkers. Then you got your artillery guns up top. So, in order to get through the barbed wire and even possibly blow up the bunkers, you'd have to activate the Bangalore torpedo that has lots of explosives in it, and it would blow it up. See how the barbed wire is gone, and even the bunker got affected. Then these people do it as well. See, got blown up. So that's uh, Bangalore Torpedo, the uses of it. Okay, so the second strategy of D-Day was the use of different Sherman tank abilities. So I'll start right here. So this <clears throat> is a display of the Sherman tank crew experience, that ability. As you see, this is a Sherman tank, and this is a German Panther tank. And by the way, Sherman tanks are American, if you didn't know. And as you can see, this guy looks like he has experience. He has a smile on his face and everything. But if you go over to the Germans, over here, well, the Nazis, doesn't have that good of a face. He's a little nervous. It's because all the inexperienced Nazis ended up getting the bigger tanks, and the bigger tanks, such as the Panther, were going against these smaller Sherman tanks of America. But the strategy used with <clears throat> having more crew experience would just be well, blowing up the enemy, being able to get around the sides easier, flank them, just knowing a lot more, like how to maneuver a tank. As you can see, a bunch of Sherman tanks blowing up a Tiger tank right here. Okay? And then this display right here shows how <clears throat> Sherman tanks and American tanks in general had, like, thinner armor. As you can see, this is only one block thick. And then the German armor is two blocks thick. And what that means is that an American tank will be able to go faster than most German tanks. Well, some German tanks were uh, faster, but they were a lot smaller. And also, the Sherman tank's turret was a lot more maneuverable, so it could rotate faster. As you can see, the turret is already to the side of this German Panther tank. And the German Panther's tank, uh, the tank's turret, hasn't fully rotated yet to the Sherman. So the Sherman tank's turret is a lot faster. And this display over here, <clears throat> this is the ability of having more Sherman tanks and allied tanks in general. And you can see that there's two Sherman tanks and one Tiger tank, showing that there's more. The strategy used with this would be to outnumber the enemy, basically. And again, if you go back to this strategy display, showing all four Sherman tanks, there's a total of four Sherman tanks going against one German tank. And obviously they're going to win because they can flank them. And that's also another strategy that would be used with this ability of having turret speed and speed in general. Just flanking, getting around the sides of the enemy tank, the weak spots. 
Okay. And that was the second strategy of D-Day. Sherman, the use of Sherman tank abilities. Okay, so the third weaponry strategy of D-Day was sending more tanks and weaponry out, like out onto the beaches. <clears throat> so this display shows three Sherman tanks and three, like, artillery, pretty big artillery. And on the other side, you see two Nazi tanks. This is a Tiger. And that one right there is a panther. And two Nazi artillery. But as you can see, there is more Shermans and artillery on the American side, well, allied in general, than on the Nazi side. So America and the allies made so many tanks and artillery. In general, they made it. But on D-Day, that's why it's called Operation Overlord. They just sent so much stuff, and it totally overpowered the Nazis' uh, weaponry. As you can see, it relates to the uh, part of the second strategy of D-Day, with the Sherman tank, the use of the Sherman tank abilities. One of them was, like, having more Sherman tanks. It relates to that, because tanks are type of weaponry, so that's why I put it in the same category. Yeah, so that is the third strategy of D-Day, sending more tanks and weaponry out. Okay, I just wanted to show you all of my displays from a bird's eye view. So over on the right here is the Bangor torpedo display. You can see. And one thing I forgot to show with this was there was actually a plane up there, an allied plane getting burned down because it was shot by these artillery guns on the bunkers. Then over here, bird's eye view of the different Sherman tank abilities and like the strategies used with them. It's more on this left side here, right here. And then this is the uh, third strategy of D-Day right there. That was the sending out a lot of weaponry to the battle. Then I'll just go up and show everything. And the plane up there. Okay, thank you.